Hi, we are Kujo, and we are here to tell you about a new threat to your home security. So in the past, you would lock your doors and windows to keep criminals away from your home. Now these same criminals are hacking your home and the smart devices to invade your privacy and your security. So this threat exists because for the past 20 years, all you had was a PC with antivirus to keep it safe. Now, everything you bring home from your smart TV to a fridge, it's all connected to the internet and the companies making those devices are clueless about internet security. So when these devices are so easy to hack, it's almost like uh, you left your doors open and your windows open and you went on vacation. Think about it. The FBI gets thousands and hundreds of calls from individual people who had been ransomed, whose files had been ransomed. So no wonder the director of the FBI He's on record that he tapes his webcam when he goes home. If he's concerned about cybersecurity at home, so should you. So what do they do? Yeah, they can hack you, they can watch you, they can stalk you, they can listen to you. That's not creepy enough. What happens next is the real challenge. Once they're on your network, they can get to the rest of your devices. Your laptop, your PC, your files, your medical information. Your entire life is connected and you store all of that at home. Now all of that is exposed to these criminals. So collectively our team has over 50 years of experience in cybersecurity, enterprise cybersecurity. We saw this threat coming. So that's why a while ago we started building on a solution. We call it Kujo and we say it's the smart way to fight home hacking. Let me co show you what Kujo is. So Kujo is a little smart device, very powerful, that you connect to your network to keep you safe against all kinds of cyber threats. Kujo locks down every single thing, every single device on your network. Let me show it to the judges and let's demo Kujo to you. Bob, let's go to PC1. PC1, please. Someone backstage? All right, here we go. Robert, my partner Robert is holding a baby monitor. You all have webcams like that, security cameras at home. Now you can see the crowd, you can see the judges. Uh, it's cool, right? The only challenge is this feed is hacked. He's not supposed to be seeing this. He's not on the same network that this camera is on. So what happens next is the real scary part because now he can get to the rest of the devices on the network. So. Let's connect the other cool Joe to the network that the camera is on. Thank you. And let's go and show you the app experience while Kujo activates itself. So Kujo is simple. It's plug and play. When you first connect it, it populates every single device on your network automatically. So this is my home, Samsung, Belkin, etc. Very cool devices. Whenever there's a threat against your network, uh, if you go to a bad place or bad people come to you, something like this happens. Here's a brand new threat. After we connected it, it, de it detected an unauthorized attempt to access your camera and it blocked it. You can unblock it should you wish most people to look at you. But now if we go back to a PC1, please. Yep. Ultimately, this feed is going to be stopped and hackers will not be able to see it. So, if we go back to the slides, let me explain you how Kujo does the protection. Takes a little while. All right. So, um, all right. So, Kujo itself is a gateway. It takes metadata, sends it off to the cloud, little bits of information about your network. There, we apply threat intelligence. We also use machine learning to build behavioral models of your devices. So, when we see that uh, a device is doing something that it's not, su not supposed to, such as, for example, your fridge pulling out files and sending them to an address in Australia, we block that particular behavior, only that behavior. Your device is still working. And the coolest thing is when my Cujo is attacked and when I block a threat, everyone else's Cujos are updated in real time and they can now block that same threat. Let's talk about the market. There's going to be 50 billion devices out there by 2020. So owning a system like that is going to be a no-brainer. 
That's why in a very short amount of time we sold over 5,000 units. Hujo is for sale for $99 as well as an $8.99 a month fee to keep every single device on your network protected uh, on a business level with business level security. So in summary, I'd like for you to think about your home security and how it must change. Whoever you are, whatever your zip code is, now someone sitting thousands of miles away could have already hacked your accounts while I've been pitching you. And you will not be able to call the cops and the alarm bells will not go off. That is why you need Cujo. Today we're announcing Cujo uh, on Amazon. You can get it with six months of free service for the next 24 hours. You can also find it on Indiegogo and our website, getcujo.com. Thank you. All right, good work, Cujo. Wait, did, did you guys see their shirts? They're, they're pretty good. Do you want to do like a little 360? Because it's, I want to make sure, yeah, it's, it's not bad. Uh, judges, did you see it? I want to make sure everyone sees yes. the shirt. Okay, good. Uh -huh. nice. Now, do you have any questions, thoughts? I do. Um, a great presentation, so thank you very much. Um, it seems like ultimately this technology should probably exist at the network level or the router level. Why do we need a separate device? What could be the second or third type of device of this type in a home? And how long is it until it can actually just be a part of a standard router system? So that's a great question. A lot of the router companies are talking to us about ultimately integrating Kujo, the cloud, into their systems. But there are two challenges to it right now. A, there are billions of routers out there already, and you cannot upgrade them. And B, the routers that are the way they're being made today, they're not very, uh, they're not very hardware strong. They use very simple chipsets that make, uh, you know, you're very limited to what you can do with a router from a security perspective. Can we talk a little bit about distribution? My feeling is that this is a product that's going to be sold, not bought. So how are you going to convince people to buy it? Well, part of it is educating the market about the threat. The media does a great job for us, and the way we look at marketing is telling people about the problem, urging them to be vigilant, and also showing them a potential simple solution. Uh, that said, we are selling directly. We are also now on Amazon. We're, we're going to be selling through all major retailers by the end of the year. Um, I think the fact of the matter is that people in general they do not think of online and being connected as a place of, uh, with security and privacy. So they are looking for that type of a solution. Can you talk a little bit about what my other options would be if I wanted to prevent the bad guys from getting into my home? See, the challenge is you can be vigilant, you can be very sophisticated, but your average person, um, it's too tricky for them. What they want is something that works for them and keeps them informed. So. We are one of the layers of security. I'd like to think that we're going to be your main layer of security at home. But uh, uh, you should also stay very vigilant and know where you go and what you click on. And can you talk a little bit about your competition and what makes you superior? Well, we're the first to market. We're creating a brand new industry. We've been uh, working aggressively in this for a year, both from, uh, obviously, development perspective, uh, patenting, and uh, We've got the crack team that's done it before for very, very large enterprises, uh, built companies before, so we're very confident, you know, being so passionate about this product that we can create something very cool. What are the margins of the hardware? Uh, we're breaking even thereabouts on the hardware. Uh, the main business, obviously, is a subscription. That's where we make our money. Do you see this as primarily a consumer product? Do you think it could also be used in offices and businesses? A lot of doctors, lawyers, accountants, people with liabilities buy Cujo or pre-order Cujo. So absolutely, it's for small businesses and homes. Think of it, in the past, only enterprises were able to afford systems like that, that are real-time, cloud-based. Now we're bringing it to regular people. And do you see channel partners like the cable companies that are already putting boxes in people's homes as relevant to you? Absolutely. So there are a lot of complementary partnerships uh, that we are partners that we're dealing with. Uh, I want to say 12 verticals altogether. Um, so you'll be seeing Kujo brought by many of them in the near future. Educating a market like this sounds expensive. Uh, and if you're breaking even on your margins, then it's hard to think about how you're making that business work long term. How do you guys get your margins down? So from a margin, from a hardware margin perspective, obviously volume speaks. And we already have plans uh, to bring it down significantly from a cost perspective. What is your current bomb? Uh, the bomb is basically w the price of MSRP, $99. Okay, so it's the 99 Yeah. Got it. So, but uh, also to your question, it takes, when we do direct response advertising, 
uh, when we buy ads, uh, it takes us about four or five months worth of subscriptions to break even on that uh, acquisition. And what is the cost of your user acquisition through the ad? It's about $40. That's direct, not blended. And how does the product work if I am a guest visiting the home of someone who has Cujo up and running, but I have never used it myself, so it's not uploaded on my device in terms of the app and so forth? Sure. So the first thing that's going to happen, if you come to my house as a guest, I'll get a notification that there's a new device on my network. I'll tap on the app. I'll be able to disconnect you should I want. But as soon as you are connected to my Wi-Fi, it's shielded by Cujo. So you don't have to approve it to be shielded? That is correct. Got it. I know you guys have a lot of experience in this area, but can you talk a little bit about how you know each other, the background of the team a little bit more? So my background is a... My own? My, no. So uh, Yuri's background is, I'll speak for Yuri. Uh, <laughs> He's been actually on this stage in San Francisco in 2007 uh, with a company called Butyl, a machine learning company that was later acquired by Google. So he's doing a Redux here. Uh, and uh, you know, we've known each other for a couple of years. Uh, we collaborated together in enterprise security. We knew Robert as a, very, as a top hacker uh, from that space, from that world. So we all got together and created Kujo. Sometimes. Uh Things aligns and stars aligns, and then great people meet. Can you talk a little bit more about the B2B? It seems like if you're going to be doing this as a subscription based service, especially when there's a high degree of education, that B2B sales might be the right channel to start with. That's a good point. That's why we're so focused on partnerships, really working with companies that understand the challenge, that are cutting edge, and that can deliver the same user experience, the Kujo user experience. All right, let's give one last round of applause for Kujo. Nice work, guys.